Welcome everybody, my name is Michael or Kubera. Today we are discussing about $500,000 in payments that were sent out last month from a French Bitcoin investor. Presumably, we don't know the full evidence and nobody really knows exactly who this individual is, but that is the story. So do we believe this story? Maybe, maybe not. Let us roll the intro and let's get into it. <laughs> First of all, before we get into it, because it is related with these events that happened earlier this month that we made a video about, Trump getting banned from Twitter and Jack Dorsey. Sure, he endorses Bitcoin. Sure, he's all for decentralization. But I made a video how this is setting a pretty bad precedent. If the president of the United States of America can get censored, anybody can get censored. And recently, Parler went down from Amazon's AWS. They're the servers that were hosting the website and the website is absolutely gone. For those of you who disagree with me, that's all right. Everybody is free to their own opinion. I believe that this may lead to more accounts from random individuals, people who don't have the money, people who don't have the political power, people who don't have the network and connections to try and get unbanned. And in the future, there might be millions of accounts. Every single person who's viewing this, every single person who has a Twitter account or a YouTube account or Snapchat or Instagram or Facebook or whatever, if we don't stop these organizations and companies now in their tracks the future might look pretty bleak for censorship. And Poland is actually taking up Twitter and other social media organizations, but we might make a video on that. This has already been going on for quite some time. And if you know from my old channel, Avi, as someone who has been affected by a unjust banning, and then I got unbanned again, it is not cool sometimes. The algorithms don't do their jobs correctly. And even Vitalik Buterin is concerned about this. He said Parler has a right to exist. The attempts at bringing down Parler are very very worrying. Apple, Google, AWS are much more like common infrastructure providers than a social media site is. So now it's getting outside of social media and it's getting into these monopolies that basically dominate the internet as we know of today. Buterin continued, I think a global conversation medium is a valuable thing to have. I worry that default political philosophy, both liberal, democratic, and otherwise, will push social media governments in a very state-centric direction, which risks rupturing any semblance of such a thing. Cryptocurrency networks might play a role in the future for decentralization and hopefully protecting free speech. It's a non-state centric ecosystem that has had to grapple with tough political philosophy questions already. Who knows, maybe Ethereum might be a censorship proof platform in the future. Anyways, let's get on into where this $500,000 comes in. So a lot of people are saying that it came to alt-right donation. So a lot of people are saying that this money came from a French address, from a French cryptocurrency exchange. This was an early investor in cryptocurrency. They made a lot of money. They had a blog that hasn't been posted on since 2014. And suddenly 28.15 BTC came out on December 8th. So the value of that obviously grew, and now that would be worth over $1 million. To be exact right now, 28.15 BTC, even with cryptocurrencies fall recently. Bitcoin's peak was at $42,000, but even with its current price of $39,133, 28.15 BTC is worth $1,008,352.71, so a fair chunk of money. This money was sent to 22 wallets, where some of these wallets were associated with alt-right accounts. But people are saying that these donations went to Antifa groups, and we can't really trust this address belonged to a French citizen who just made a lot of money through cryptocurrency because people think there's a larger conspiracy going on here. This is straight out of Russia's playbook. Russia should use its special services within the borders of the United States to fuel instability and separatism. For instance, provoke Afro-American races. Russia should introduce geopolitical disorder into internal American activity, encouraging all kinds of separatism and ethnic, social, and racial conflicts, actively supporting all dissident movements, extremist, racist, and sectarian groups, thus destabilizing internal political processes in the U.S. It would also make sense simultaneously to support isolationist tendencies in American politics. And this came from the foundations of geopolitics. Russia has been known to play around with not just America, but other nations 
and it's not just Russia, there's also China and other smaller nations like North Korea that have used cryptocurrency and have used hacking attacks and the internet to try and provoke larger nations, create chaos, and we really don't know where this money came from. So the source can't be verified. I'm not gonna go too deep here, but the main story is that it was an investor who made a lot of money and they stopped posting on their blog for years and years and suddenly they made a blog post out of nowhere that basically sounded like a suicide note, like, like it was his last days on earth and he was sending out most of his fortune to groups that he supported. Right-wing figures, influencers, and websites including VDare, The Daily Storm, and Nick Fuentes received generous donations from a Bitcoin account linked to a French cryptocurrency exchange. So this was all done according to research done by Chainalysis. Nick Fuentes was the largest donation of the bunch. He received over $250,000. Now, of course, donations have been made to various groups over the years, both from the left side and from the right side, and from people all over the spectrum. And every single time someone says, oh no, see what Bitcoin's being used for, it's being used for criminal activity, or it's being used for something that is debasing democracy. I point out to you that the dollar amounts that are being used every single day on a criminal basis are probably 10 to 50 times larger than what Bitcoin ever was involved in. And now that Bitcoin is becoming a more stable asset, as these institutional investors and banks and governments are claiming over the past year, that more of this money is just speculative investment, billions of dollars supporting companies that are trying to produce a technological revolution, and maybe a small percentage of it is indeed trying to avoid government, but most of it fails anyways, because Bitcoin is not anonymous. If you were trying to stay anonymous, Monero would be the better bet. It's still not fully 100% anonymous, but some people think it's better than just paying in cash. So it really depends on your viewpoint. Chainalysis researchers discovered a blog post from the BTC user that reads like an apparent suicide note, bequeathing his money to certain causes and people in light of what he describes as the decline of Western civilization. Though the researchers were unable to confirm that the user was indeed dead, Chainalysis declined to publish the user's name, citing privacy concerns due to the inability to conclusively confirm his death and out of concerns over ongoing law enforcement investigations. So both the American police and FBI alongside the French government, is working to try and figure out whether this individual had any criminal associations. Though the donations are not a smoking gun or indicative of a crime, and it remains unclear to what extent the capital riot was coordinated in advance, the activity is nonetheless revealing. All we know is that most likely it's a French programmer, and he might still be just chilling, and we don't even know how much money he indeed has, so maybe he just sent a portion of his fortune. Honestly, is this worrying? I don't think so, because there will all Always be organizations from both political spectrums that will use cryptocurrency or dollars or gold or diamonds or any form of payment. And as mainstream payment platforms begin to ban certain individuals and organizations, we may see them embrace cryptocurrency. Now, of course, just because someone is an extremist, it does not mean that they're committing a crime in all of these circumstances. And it still is rather easy to trace these cryptocurrency transactions. But it is interesting news nevertheless. So that is today story. On the other channel, we will discuss why Bitcoin might reach $100,000 or will definitely reach $100,000 at least, if not this year, into the near future. Maybe that's the next few years. So if you're still not subscribed over there, check out the link it will be in the description below. Also, we made a video on cold storage wallets. If you don't have a cold storage wallet, you might be interested. I do have an affiliate link for Ledger and Trezor down below. And that is that. So thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, hit that like button, comment, and subscribe to help with the engagement. And we shall see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for joining in on these daily videos. Bye.